Why does Jesse Smollett's backdoor deal actually prove he staged his own attack? Fine. Welcome back to the channel, all you shakers. Derek Van Shake here. Jesse Smollett is that Hollywood actor on the hit Fox TV show, Empire who was accused of staging his own attack. The Chicago police had mountains of evidence against him, and they understood he staged his own attack to gain more publicity just so he can demand a higher salary on his TV show. And as I pointed out in my previous video of him, it was also to apparently compensate for his lifelong insecurity of being perceived as physically weak. Watch. As a gay man, you were considered somehow to be weak, and I'm not weak. I'm the gay Tupac. I am not weak. I'm the gay Tupac. Jesse Smollett's expensive lawyers clearly were able to negotiate a sweetheart deal to get the prosecution to drop all charges. Despite how Jesse tries to lie and make it seem like the prosecution dropped the charges because of a lack of evidence, the charges dropped actually prove Jesse Smollett is guilty of staging his attack. Now, let's analyze the evidence and body language which will prove Jesse is guilty once and for all. There is no deferred prosecution. The motion was to nolly pros, which is a legal technical term, for dismiss the charges. Charges against Jesse Smollett are now dismissed? That seems odd. I thought the police said they had mountains of evidence. Let's keep watching. Do I think justice will serve? No. Jesse voluntarily agreed to the forfeiture of the bond money. Jesse Smollett voluntarily donated his $10,000 bail bond to the city, even though he believes he was wrongfully accused of filing a false police report? He's such a generous guy. On financial costs, this $10,000 doesn't even come close to what the city spent in resources. Is it a deal or not a deal if he's giving up his bond? There is no deal. The state dismissed the charges. Look what the prosecutors quietly posted on their website after Jesse's press conference. Remember, this is a major national high-profile case. The prosecutors didn't hold a press conference before Smollett spoke to the media, which Smollett, of course, made it seem like he was exonerated, saying there wasn't a deal, when clearly there was a deal made so he can avoid trial. Whether $10,000 and some community service was an appropriate penalty We'll get to that later. But prosecutors were so quiet in such a high-profile case. And conveniently, they said nothing with no press conference at all. Also, prosecutors didn't say anything to the police superintendent or mayor about the deal they made with Jesse. I don't know what's unusual for the state's attorney, but uh, we found out about when you all did. Even though Jesse Smollett's crime of filing a false police report was against the police, the prosecutors seemed to intentionally let Jesse Smollett and his attorney go on TV making their statement first and making everyone think he's completely innocent, confusing the public To be perfectly honest with you, Wolf, I'm completely confused. And hoping someone like me wouldn't clear things up for everyone. If you want to say you're innocent of a situation, then you take your day in court. I would never, if someone falsely accused me, I would never hide behind a brokered deal and secrecy. Period. Uh, we have nothing to say to the police department except to investigate charges uh, and not try their cases in the press, uh, but to allow matters to be uh, investigated, allow the state to investigate and to bring charges and not to jump ahead and uh, utilize the press. Uh, to convict people before they are tried in a court of law. But I remind everybody it was not just the officer's work. A piece of that work was shown to a grand jury and they made a decision based on only a sliver of the evidence. So a grand jury actually brought the charges. He is someone who has dedicated his life to public service since he was 15 years old. He, he has taken uh, the city of Chicago as his home. He has volunteered in a variety of ways. He is a good, solid citizen of the city of Chicago. And he used the laws of the hate crime legislation that all of us collectively over years have put on the books to stand up to be the values that embody what we believe in. This is a whitewash of justice. Where is the accountability in the system? You cannot have because of a person's position one set of rules apply to them and another set of rules apply to everybody else. I don't know where the superintendent got that information. I was not privy to it. 
which is why you should allow investigation and allow the state to to uh, investigate a charge before you go to the press. This is not the superintendent and the detective's department word against his. And even after this whitewash, still no sense of ownership of what he's done. He says that in fact he is the wronged in this case. Because of the judge's decision, none of that evidence will ever be made public. None of it. The two men who attacked him have indicated that they attacked him. So we already know who attacked him. Those brothers have, uh, well, that's up to the state. Now we find out what Jesse Smollett's defense would have actually been. He would have claimed his two friends were the racist Trump supporters and they actually attacked and hurt him. That means he claims these two bodybuilders beat on him for 30 to 45 seconds and he only got a few little bruises and a little paper cut under his eye. It feels like if I had said it was a Muslim or a Mexican or someone black, I feel like the doubters would have supported me a lot much more, a lot more. To be clear, there's no conditions of dropping the charges or no. getting that money? No. You're saying it's not a deal? Without the completion of these terms, the charges would not have been dropped. That sounds like a deal to me. Well, the two brothers have said that they attacked him, so you know, uh, we don't want to try them in the press any more than he wanted to be tried in the press. That's so noble of Jesse. Even though these guys supposedly really hurt him and according to Jesse actually attacked him. He's not going to say anything against them in the press because he didn't like it very much when people said mean things about him in the press. But don't we recall him crying about how he so desperately wants justice? That's right. Watch this. I said I just want them to find them. And she said Sweetie, they're not going to find them. And that just made me so angry because so I'm just going to be left here with this so they get to go free and go about their life and possibly attack someone else. And I'm here to left with the, left with the aftermath of this bull. That's not cool to me. That decision was made so that he could go on with his life and get this over with and not have to fight. Now, where did we hear someone say it's so important to have a fighting spirit? Oh, that's right, right here. What do you say to a young gay man, a young gay person? To learn to fight. And I don't just mean like learn to fight. I mean, learn to fight, learn to be a fighter. And not have to continue with all of the um, disruption to his career. He is, he is a, um, a, a very, sweet individual using hate crime laws that are on the books to protect people who are minorities from violence who has for a lifetime dedicated himself to his career to then turn around and use those laws to advance your career and your financial reward to the public to children is there no decency in this man to the movement in the LGBTQIA community. It's a cost that comes to all the individuals, gay men and women, who will come forward and one day say they were a victim of a hate crime who now will be doubted. And this was a disruption to that. He wants to get back to it. I'll allow you to hear from him briefly and then we're gone. Hey everybody. What's up Jesse? I know you saw the last video I made on you. I just made a couple notes. And I'm gonna analyze your body language to tell the world when you're lying. Um, first of all, I wanna thank my family, my friends, the incredible people of Chicago and all over the country and the world who have prayed for me, who have supported me, who've shown me so much love. No one will ever know how much that has meant to me and I will forever be grateful. All that seems to be truthful body language. So that's his baseline here. He doesn't seem to be hiding in his note card or just looking to one side and then quickly looking back into his note card. He was also speaking with a steady speed and there wasn't much of a waver in his voice. Now strongly sucking in his lips in apprehension of what he's about to say. Here comes the lie. When I hit play, notice how his body language changes. I want you to know that not for a moment was it in vain? 
I've been truthful and consistent on every single level since day one. Jesse now tries extra hard to avoid eye contact with the reporters and cameras by looking down at his note card a lot and glancing over to his left where there were fewer cameras and reporters. Looking at all those reporters and cameras will make most people feel extra nervous when lying. I would not be my mother's son if I was capable of one drop of what I've been accused of. There was a lot of signs of deceit here. Let's go through them. First, notice how difficult it was for him to look up at the cameras and the reporters. It was like he wanted to hide looking at his note card. Second, a rare verbal stumble when giving that statement about his mother. Third, did you hear the waver in his voice? Watch again. I would not be my mother's son if I was capable of one drop of what I have been accused of. That waiver signals nervousness, delivering that line of his statement. When we lie, we typically get extra nervous because we're afraid we're gonna get caught or found out. Fourth, that line should have been very personal and emotional, talking about how his mother raised him well, but he casually delivered it like he just told his friend he's going out to get groceries. He was lying. This has been an incredibly difficult time, honestly one of the worst of my entire life. But I am a man of faith, and I am a man that has knowledge of my history, and I would not bring my family, our lives, or the movement through a fire like this. I just wouldn't. So I want to thank my legal counsel from the bottom of my heart. And I would also like to thank the state of Illinois for attempting to do what's right. Mr. Smollett is still saying that he is innocent, still running down the Chicago Police Department. How dare him? How dare him? Now I'd like nothing more than to just get back to work and move on with my life. But make no mistakes, I will always continue to fight for the justice, equality, and betterment of marginalized people everywhere. At the end of the day, it's Mr. Smollett who committed this, 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 this hoax, period. If he wanted to clear his name, the way to do that was in a court of law so that everyone could see the evidence. So again, thank you for all the support. Thank you for faith and thank you to God. Bless y'all. Thank you very much. This is unbelievable. It's a disgrace to those who are truly victims of hate crimes. It's a whitewash. And then they seal the records and he gets to go out and say, I'm innocent. What he did here was put a hoax that put police in danger, the community in danger, ratcheted up racial tension, an ongoing conspiracy with multiple individuals to fool the public, to fool the police, lied repeatedly to the police. That guy gets off with this. It's a disgrace. The police department isn't even apprised of this prior to the decision being made. And and they find out about it on the media? That's not how prosecutors and police operate, Chef. I can tell you that to a certainty. And then the mayor stands up and calls the whole thing a sham. Have you ever seen anything like this? I, I, honest to God, I've never seen anything like this. There's no question Jesse Smollett is guilty of staging his own attack, and it's both hilarious and sad that he's actually prancing around, making it seem like the charges were dropped because there wasn't enough evidence, and he's now magically exonerated. No, Jesse, the charges were dropped because you agreed to pay $10,000 and do 18 hours of community service, and because you apparently didn't think you could fight all the mountains of evidence against you that would have been on display in a public trial. And it seems the prosecution was bribed, strong-armed, or blackmailed into giving you such a generous deal and making the contents of that deal as quiet as possible. You may ask, if the prosecutors wanted to let Jesse off, why did they even put out that statement saying he was not exonerated and and it was in fact a deal. Well, they can't make it obvious that there was a backdoor deal because that's extremely illegal and those involved could be sent to prison. The prosecutors must be able to argue at least that this type of thing happens a lot and it's actually something they always do. Even though basically every legal analyst has confirmed this does not happen. Sometimes I had to make decisions that the police weren't comfortable with, but I brought them into the office. I explained to them the reasons for those decisions. And again, they may hold their nose, but they would say, okay, fine, that's your your discretion, but it was based upon the facts and it was based upon the law. The fact that they never even communicated this and the police and the mayor are just blindsided. The grand jury, the citizens of the county are the ones that make a decision of whether or not there's going to be an indictment. And 23 folks said there was enough evidence to move this case forward to trial and a prosecutor unilaterally decides to give it away. This is totally not typical. They have tried to put it off to the public as this being the usual course of business for a non-violent first-time offender. Do two days of community service 
service, forfeit your bond, $10,000, you're just like everybody else. This is an example of justice for the rich and powerful versus justice for the poor. Yes, they could have come to an agreement, the defense lawyer and the prosecutor, to do something like what we call continued without a finding or an adjournment in contemplation of dismissal. These are legal terms where you get six months to be able to be on good behavior and you would pay much more money. You would admit guilt. You would do an apology to the entire city of Chicago. Who gets out there first? The defendant and his lawyer get out there first. He gets to proclaim his innocence. So we all think, well, what was wrong with the case? Did they go arrest the brothers if he is then telling the truth? And it's only hours later that the prosecutor corrects this. Something doesn't make sense. You don't have charges dropped. They're dropped for one of three reasons. Either one, there's some bombshell exonerating evidence clearing him. That's clearly not the case. Two, they felt there was insufficient evidence after reviewing everything to proceed and that they'll win at a trial. That doesn't seem likely in light of everything that we know in the Chicago Police Department says that they have more evidence coming forward than was made public. Or C, there was some deal made that no one can explain 24 hours later. And I think that's where where we're at right now. Clearly, Jesse Smollett knows a lot of people in high places. He's apparently friends with the Obamas, who are, of course, from the Chicago area and moved back since they left the White House. If you're friends with one of the nation's most powerful families, you're likely friends with other powerful people who can pull these types of strings for you. Text and email messages show that when Smollett was still considered a victim by authorities, Tina Chen, a former chief of staff to Michelle Obama, reached out to Kim Fox on behalf of the Smollett family, saying they have concerns about the investigation. Please welcome Tina Chen and Journey Smollett. Chicago is notorious for being extremely corrupt. Someone high up in Chicago circles clearly made this happen for Jesse. Here's what Fox said yesterday. If the public is upset about the outcome of this case, it's because they don't understand the law. I think what she means is they don't understand the corruption in the in the Chicago <laughs> system where the <laughs> prosecu- prosecutors said she's not going to say that. But this defense. expungement? This allows him to answer under oath truthfully that he was never arrested and never charged, even though the whole country knows that he was. Because they cleaned his record? Yes. Jesse Smollett didn't even have to apologize for staging this attack and filing a false police report. Now, if you think justice was not served, give this video a thumbs up. If you think justice was served, then give this video a thumbs down. Now in the comments, how do you think Jesse Smollett got this sweetheart deal? Let everyone know. In the comments below. Remember to subscribe for more body language and investigative videos, and I'll see you 